I am delighted to welcome my next guest. Her name is Chris Dove, and she contacted me after reading my column in the Euro Weekly about the loss of my darling, darling. And it was a very difficult column to write, and I was really delighted. Chris, hello. Hello, Nikki. It was a very, very lovely email that you sent. It was very Thank empathetic you. with my loss, and wonderful that you introduced this book that you've written. Yes. Which I just love the concept because it's from the puppy's point Absolutely. of view. I'm a big animal fan. Yes. So this, I like this project. No. So welcome to the programme. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for writing to me. And tell us a little bit about the book. I, I mean, how did you to. come to... Having an idea is one thing, but you put it into practice. Well, I have to correct people first of all because actually I'm not the author. I didn't write it. I'm the publisher. I, I organise it all. Oh, okay. What happened was... I went to England last year, last February, for, to see my mother, and I got to see her, and she's in Cheshire, and she'd written a story on the back of a paper, the typical back of an envelope type thing, then she'd lost it. I said, she said, I've written a story about a puppy. I said, well, what was it about? And she told me the story, the outline, I said, Mum, you've got to write it again. So while I was trapped in England for, over the lockdown holiday, a lockdown of lockdown, sorry. Yeah, but it was a holiday. It was a really holiday for me. Yeah. Uh, it was a holiday for me. She wrote it again, and I, and I sort of like padded it out, and we ended up with this. And Mum's got a very young friend, a child illustrator down in Kent. So she said, Adam, can you draw me some puppies, Pic puppy pictures? So he sent them my email. So I was liaising between my mum and this little boy, Adam, doing all the emails, and doing the corrections, the editing, getting he was emailing the pictures. I was then retouching them up, etc. And I said, Mum, we've got a book. We've got to go to print. Now, easier said than done. You know, everybody's got a book in them. They say, well, my mum's 81. <laughs> First time author. I said, Christine, please, whatever you do, do try and get me this book published. So I said, yes, leave it with me. Well, I thought it would be, I thought, a children's book. It's only a few pages. Lovely story. No problem. A nightmare, really, to get it off the ground. And I actually approached some different children's publishers, and they said, the story, the theme, the concept sounds fantastic, but we, we can't just launch a book like that, you know, you have to give it time. So I said, in that case, let me go and do it alone. So I did. came back here, obviously, and got even more inspired. When I saw, at the time, before I, just before I saw your article, Nicole, I was actually planning it, like, how can, how can I get this off the, off the ground? And then I saw the article, I said, well, this is it, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd already got a copy in our hands. I said, well... Right. This is where we launch it, and Nicole is the best person, a doggy, dog lover of all, of all, who would be, be able to help, who would be able to help. This, for everyone, is a very fetching, very eye-catching... A puppy's tail by Rex. puppy's tail by Rex. So That's your mummy is Rex. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, what she did was she... she Mum, she's, she's very much an animal lover like you as well, but she was actually thinking, what are these... What, what is the dog's life like from from birth from she, their perspective from their perspective literally she was thinking what would I think of so the words it uses very very simple words very simple phrases in basic English so it's targeted at children but it's also a story for adults it's a story for grandparents a story for teachers great grandparents you can sit with your child and read it go, right read through it there are many 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 there are pictures on every single page so children are, you hold their focus and as you're reading the story either to them or if they're reading it themselves, they can actually sort of point at, you know, we've got paws and dog beds and dog bones and the dog leads and stories about them running around in the park. In fact, Nicole, what made me, what actually got me interested in you was when you said you were talking about your dogs running around at home, you know, and, and, and the way that poor little darling, when she came... Had to survive had to between survive those, all those all legs. legs of the chest. <laughs> well, that's exactly what the puppy says here. He's talking about how um, as soon as, as, soon as the owner says walkies, they all run around and they're all trying to get, you know, who's going to be first? Oh, oh God. Don't worry, don't worry. Sorry. 
who's going to be first to get to the door, you know, really very empathetic with what you were saying from a dog's perspective. And then as the dogs are growing up, they, they find that from the rescue home, others are coming in, other rescue dogs have been invited in as well. And they're saying, oh, what are they like? You know, you know should, I, should I be friendly with them? Are they going to attack me? That's a very big dog. You know, or, or that dog was whining. And it it's, could almost be human talking. It's very, very Which is a very good way of bringing out conversations of a child's feelings exactly. via discussing them in the comparable of the, of the puppy. Exactly. It's very, very much a very child-oriented story. And it's, because, it's very, because it uses very simple words, Children can relate to, you know, there's no, nothing difficult about it at all. So again, for teachers, this could be a very, good, um, a very good useful tool for teachers as well. The other thing is, that the, and I had the idea, at the end of each chapter, I mean, I've read it so many times, obviously, as, as the editor, and I've read it so many times. As I was going through it, I thought, I know what. Why don't I do a part of, at each chapter, at the end, try and remember? So... Children can, there's a section here, for, ex, for example, try and remember with the, big blue, with the big yellow star where it asks them three questions. What did, oh my God, as, as good as like the beginning of school when they're like, abs- how much school. have you understood? Exactly, exactly. A little comprehension test, I call it a little easy memory test, you know. You can say, what did Rex think at the beginning of when he was first taken to the rescue home, from the home? How did Rex get on with the, with, with the big dog that was lying on the thing? You know, very simple, very, very touching um, phrases for the, for the kids to enjoy. I'm absolutely delighted to have you here. I'm Thank so you. glad that you contacted me. Thank you. I'm so glad that you took the same initiative and you just got on this for mum. I mean, you yes. must be so proud, mum, of your little girl. But similarly, you must be so proud of your mum. Uh, I'm very proud of my mum. To be honest with you, she's been a widow now for five years. Oh, bless. I'm so sorry yes, for your loss. Yes, very sad. And for you. She's been living alone. She's got fantastic neighbours. Absolutely fun. But she's into a garden. She's a mad keen gardener. And none of us, I'm the eldest of four, none of us had ever seen mum write, you know, anything. And then so for her to suddenly say, I've written a book, it's like a story. It's like, you know, very proud of her. And then when she was saying to me, Christine, I didn't realise it was you would be so interested. Now I've been reading hundreds of books. I was my, my dad used to buy me books every week. I could read a book in a day, no problem. So I love reading. And I said, look, this is exactly the type of book I would have loved to have read myself as a child, you know. And then with the little memory test, it jogs your memory, and then you get ready for the next chapter and you watch these, you read these puppies growing up and how they're all getting on together, sometimes not getting on together. And the theme really, unintentionally, there's a, almost like a hidden theme about the story, which says, it shows you that different breeds of dogs, different ages, different sizes, different colors, can all live together happily. And there's that message of harmony and how we can all, you know, humanity, we can all be human. Being and different all is together. nice. It, exactly. It's there's really nice to be different. Absolutely. <laughs> use, you know, you know music. It's, there's nothing negative about it at all and it's and in one way as well children parents as well would appreciate i think that one part of this one element of the story would be not to not to bully or discriminate on based on anyone's age or size or color or background or anything you know as you'll see if the puppies and the dogs can get on very well together happily you know not taking any notice of, of, of things like that we can do so as well. I Where mean, can we get the book, Chris? Okay. Well, really, it is on Amazon. Very, very nice, um, lovely site as well on Amazon. But people get it, can get it directly from me as well. Okay, that's so, an easier way of doing it. That's an easy way. So people in Spain, for example, people in, in, on Costa del Sol, they can certainly get it from me. It's on my Facebook page. It's on Amazon. Anybody can contact me at and all. And also there's a percentage for charity of Mostly, each sale. Mostly. A very, very, a very big part of it is here. If you can see that, the, the big red, there's the title, and there's a big red circle that says price includes... 10%, 10% donation to, to dog, dog, charities. Charities. dog charities. How charities. much is the book, sweetheart? Okay, 9.75. Wow. 9 euros 75. 9 euros 75, A Puppy's yes. Tale by Rex. An educational story for young children, their parents, grandparents and teachers. And Rex, in his own words is going to help you understand what it's like to be a puppy because it is a dog's life but 
So we understand that like a bad thing. It's a dog's life. No, it's a great life. It's a dogs, great life. Like most dogs get to live a great life. Yes. But abandoned dogs like AAA, Marbella, Absolutely. Nose, Absolutely. they do need help. They do need support. Another one as well, Domino, Dogs in Need as well, in Malaga. All of these people, all these charities need to. And I'm hoping as well, that's going to be in Spain. I'm hoping the little boy, the illustrator, I'm hoping for him to choose a dog charity that he wants to donate to in, in, in Britain as well. So it's an international, you know, we're all international here on the coast of Costa del Sol, so it's an international project. Wonderful. Perhaps we can get little, is it Adam? Adam, Perhaps yes. we can get Adam via Zoom yes, and do a great. little chat with him too because that the illustrations are absolutely charming. Thank you. And I think children appreciate things that yes. they can tell are but done by their, yes. by their, by like, that's right. Minded kids. That's right. Well, congratulations. Right. Thank you so it much, Nicole. It was a Nicole. pleasure to meet you. Delighted to, to have you. you on the program. Thank you so I know much. that we're going to be fast friends. We're yes, going to be seeing it. a lot more of you now you that will. we've met. Thank you for you contacting Thank me. Thank you so much. You see how easy it is. Christine reads my column, had something she yeah. thought was interesting, and dropped me a line. And that's all you have to do. Send me an email, contact me anyway, either here at the television. And if it's suitable, I will be delighted to have you on the program, as delighted as I am to meet lovely Christine Dove. Congratulations, Chris. Thank Mom. you, Nicole. And right now, don't go away. We're going to a quick break. Some messages from our sponsors and our Zero Hero partners. But we'll be back right after this. Hey, hey. John's car is still being repaired. So he's delighted that Judy has come to pick him up. However, after a very heavy business trip, he's less than enthusiastic when her car breaks down. I had sure with Linear Director. She tells John. So please do relax, I've got this. And she had. The taxi was there in no time. Her car safely towed for repairs and a courtesy car readily available. Call Linear Director on 952-1478-34 to see how they can better your life too. When I'm the designated driver, I think it's only fair that I get to choose a Zero Hero venue that rewards me with free soft drinks. My friends all get to choose and booze and they feel safe going home with me. Make sure that you get your reward for being the designated driver. Why pay if you don't have to? Hi guys, Ross here from Hogan Stand. Proud to be a member of the Zero Hero campaign. And uh, we recommend everybody. Nobody drives drinking. Everybody who drives a car doesn't have any alcohol in their system. And we're proud to sponsor the Zero Hero program. It took you on your way. No time to hesitate. We are all the same. So much trouble. G-Wine is happy to be Zero Hero Partner. How cool is that? G-Wine. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I'm proud to present Zero to Hero. Never drink and drive. Yes, I mean, do you think this? Mike Moses is proud to be a Zero Hero Partner. Out of bounds, Zero Hero Partners. Here we are, sticker going on, delighted to welcome everybody and to be part of the Zero Hero campaign. Delighted. Zero Hero, welcome here, here. at the Gaucho de Maroons. Welcome to Lemongrass, Doña Lola. Thank you very much. Zero Hero, welcome to Portofino, Cabo Pino. Hi guys, Casa Tua is proud to welcome the Zero Heroes. So come on in and enjoy free soft drinks for anyone who is the designated driver. Thank you, Nicole. So here we are at Everest. Very cold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stickers going up. Let's go. 
Hi, uh, my name is Govinda. I'm from Everest. Uh, welcome to Zero Hero, to Everest Fusion, to uh, enjoy your cocktails, drinks, and happy hour as well. And food, of course, is delicious. Thank you. <laughs> Perfecto. <laughs> Everyone that comes and wants to join our Zero Hero uh, Association, they will have free uh, non-alcoholic drinks at our venue at any time. Gracias, thank you. Poison arrows shoot straight to your heart. We can change if we try. Just believe it. Designed by our fabulous Susanna Urbano Interiors. Hi, Susanna. Hey, hello. <laughs> I'm loving this chair. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? It's a wonderful place for being sitting here. This is so comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like it has my name on it. Oh, thank you, Francis. Hello, Ifruta. Enjoy. Thank you. You're welcome. It's so nice to see you, Susanna, and out here in the beautiful Puerto Anus. This lovely new space. The design is lovely, simple, elegant. So congratulations again. Quite delightful, down to every detail. So what's the philosophy? We wanted to create a space where you can be here from 9 o'clock in the morning until 12 o'clock in the afternoon for families, or for young people, for everyone. So they decided in the gastronomy side, they decided to offer um, breakfast, meals and coffees, uh, ice cream, and then dinners and cocktails and champagne and wine. So everything what you could have. But you are sitting here in a very privileged space in Puerto Banus because you have the best view to the whole bay. And surrounded by the best shops, it's all designer area. <laughs> it is, it is a design everywhere to see. And then the second thing we are offering here is the possibility of also shopping some furniture pieces, a selection of furniture pieces that I have made. And uh, when you come here, you can see on the tables that uh, more or less all the furniture is, uh, can be bought. And uh, not only these pieces, you can also see other pieces. There is a QR code where you can come here. Oh, it's very cool. Yes, with your phone, you can scan it and then it pops uh, into, into my new online shop, which is called The Signature by Susana Urbano where I have made a selection of nice things that you could need maybe for your interiors or for your exteriors. I think it's a lovely combination and what an example of hashtag better together. That's right. It really is lovely to see you collaborating with Noelia and Umberto. So El Gaucho de Benus is expanding to the other side of the port here. We'll be seeing Noelia in a few minutes. But again, Susanna, congratulations. This is quite delightful. Thank you very much for everything. Thank you very much for coming. My pleasure. I'm going to have a lovely fresh juice now, so watch this space. <laughs> Just in the time I've been here, it's filling up so much. Noelia, I mean, another venture, another major project. Where do you guys find the energy and the time? I don't know, but we find it because we 
we like to do new projects, new, you know, new experience, and we we believe in this project. We think this this place is a great opportunity um, to make uh, something new in Puerto Banu, a new concept, you know, with the furniture, with the atmosphere for people, for local people to come to Puerto Banu. Not only for age, not only tourists, all year round. Uh, we, we want people to come and enjoy breakfast, a brunch, a sushi, a poke bowl, you know, um, small food, uh, small things, uh, crepes, coffee, gelato, waffles, crepes, waffles, 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 yummy, <laughs> yummy. And also unique to have a terrace like this in Puerto Banus. There isn't anything else like it. No, it's not. No, it's just in front of the water and you know, this is a great atmosphere to enjoy with kids, with family. Uh, night time with a cocktail. It really is a privileged position. It is. Open from nine in the morning until midnight. Until midnight, yes. That's a long day. It is. But this is why we have uh, all the options. Uh, from breakfast, and then we, in the middle day we have waffles, uh, poke, sushi, and then you can have a cocktail in the afternoon like now, or at night time. Uh, a sushi cocktail, a drink. Fabulous. And one thing I love, the first thing you said to me when I walked in is, we'll be Zero Hero Partners too. Of course we will be. You would have thought that day when you came to the interview Del Gaucho, and that's the thing in Marbella, isn't it? It's just you meet people and it just connects. Yeah, that's right. And here we, we to, are. We have to, we have to connect and enjoy it and join and support, and each, support other. each other. Exactly. Well, yes. you guys are the epitome of that. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's fabulous. And everyone, remember to come because it's really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. For the coffee. You see? Nice coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining me once again. It's a pleasure to be here at the RTV Marbella Studios and have you with us. And also my guests, obviously. Delightful to meet such creative people in our community. I'll be back tomorrow with more of what's going on in Marbella now. You can check out recordings of the programme from the rtvmarbella.tv website, but also there are quick, easy links from my website, nicoleking.es, with links to the television, also to my column Marbella Moments in the Euro Weekly News, and our Zero Hero website, with an ever-increasing listing of bars, restaurants and clubs and hotels that offer free drinks to the designated driver. So that's it for today. We'll be back tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Be nice to each other. Y hasta mañana. Just believe it. Worth your